Hello and welcome to the Gnostic Warrior radio show and podcast broadcasting from GnosticWarrior.com in San Diego, California to around the world. I'm your host Mo and today on the show we have the world famous Santos Bonacci. For over 30 years Santos has been researching the ancient works, compiling and translating them into more accessible terms in his study of astrotheology. Santos lives in Melbourne, Australia, and he is a producer of video lectures and special DVDs and hosts a weekly show on American Freedom Radio. How are you doing today, Santos? It's great to have you on the show. How's the weather there in Melbourne, Australia? Great. A little bit cool today. We've had a couple of uh, hot days, though. <coughs> I'm growing a garden, so it's late November now, of course, and um, <coughs> here is some... Um, in Australia, we um, should have already planted by September, I say, so it's a couple of months late. I found that last year and the year before, summer was late anyway, and it looks like it's very late this year, so I think I should be right with my garden. <laughs> yeah, so right now it's summer there, or going to be summer? I suppose the start of December, we should wait another nine days before we declare summer, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, it's... What I'm what I'm trying to get at is it's opposite to what you you guys are coming into winter, right. uh, but now for for us guys most people are planting around now because we've had a very very cold um, start of summer really and um, gardens aren't going too well but I th- the heat is coming now for sure having the act exact opposite over here where we're having a warm one we finally had some rain today. But it's been really warm. Last week it was 75. I was on the beach and I was talking to a guy there in Vegas and he said the leaves haven't even really been changed for fall. So weird weather we're having. Yeah, yeah. Look, definitely something has changed. Now, uh, whether that is people are saying that the sun is setting in a different place and lots of people are writing to me about that. I know, I know that is a fact because... It's, it has moved because I've watched the sun, and so there's definitely some movement there. But what I think is going on is the vortex solar system we live in is compressing. It's, it's not, we do not live in a flat disk um, solar system as Copernicus and Kepler and all of these great men thought, you know, and they put the sun in the middle. The sun is in the middle for sure. It is. It's at the front really. Um, but see, the sun is spiralling flying through the heavens at, a, I think it's 108,000 miles a minute. I might be wrong, but it's a ridiculous figure anyway. You know? yeah. <laughs> even, if, <laughs> even if I did give you the correct figure, you, you, <laughs> the mind just can't, can't fathom how the sun, this ball of, of energy is flying and spiraling through the heavens spiraling is a misnomer too it's a helix so it's um it's a three dimensional Spir- spiraling would be two dimensional but it's and then the planets are following in its wake but very very close in in the sense of it's a very very um wide vortex it's not a tight vortex as suggested say by some um, esoteric scientists. It's it's always been known in in the in the inner circles, esoterically, that the solar system is vortex. Um, but but the as to the shape of it, um, you know, I think it's compressing. It was probably really really um, stretched out, and that what that gave it the appearance of flatness. Um, you know, as as in the sun is is on a plane and all the planets roughly orbit around the sun on that plane. Not the, exactly the same plane, of course. Um, like Pluto and Mars are really sort of radically, you know, uh, inclined. The Earth is about seven degrees inclined from the sun's plane. But really what scientists um, are describing here is that we are probably, I would say, seven degrees behind the sun as it flies th- 
through the heavens, if you know what I mean. We are in the vortex, we are spiralling around also, but because the sun is just twisting and turning, you know, we're pulled in its wake. <clears throat> and, um, and what happens, according to Walter Russell, the great scientist, is that planets that are created at the equators of suns um, commence to rotate faster or are forever rotating faster in their, <clears throat> in their rotations. So our, our Earth is rotating daily faster, so the day is getting shorter and shorter. And the orbit, its orbit is getting slower and slower. In fact, 2,750 years ago, all cultures added five and a, and a quarter days to their pre-existing 360-day calendar. So this is only in recent history. We're talking just a couple of thousand, nearly 3,000 years ago, every culture under the sun added five and a half days. Well, this indicates for sure that the orbit is slowing down because as Walter Russell explained, um, the planets are also receding. They are distancing themselves from the sun as they orbit on a wider and slower orbit path but rotate forever faster. And this maintains a balance between the centripetal and the centrifugal uh, forces and so they don't fly off on a tangent. And this is how um, vortex solar systems work. So, Is, is that how we're, we're somewhat managed here on, on Earth by the, the powers that be sent us? Because here we are in the year 2013 and, of course, the, the world isn't 2013 years old and of course there's you hear of different ages that we're in I, I my research says the sixth age but some people say the fifth and we're all over the place what's your thoughts on that in regards to the times and what we're living in now and them putting different time periods on us you know like we're in the year 2013 it started under Augustus Caesar why does it start like this and where where are we at Oh wow! This is a good. <laughs> this is a good subject. I'd really like to elaborate on this, okay? Uh, because uh, I've recently been privy to some new information about the Sestui KV system and the Papal Bull uh, Holy See Crown Commonwealth system that we live under, operated by the Vatican and the Bar, and. Um, We've just discovered that they have two calendars, you see, the Anno Domini calendar, the year of the Lord, and you'll notice that Domini is the root word for dominate. Um, this is not the calendar that the Roman elite uh, or the elite of the world use. They use the Anno Mundi calendar. <laughs> so... This, as I've always said, uh, you know, I've always suspected that this calendar, the J.C. Julian uh, Gregorian calendar. See, Julius Caesar is also JC, remember that. And a lot of uh, writers and historians now are starting to work out that what we've got here is this um, superimposed calendar, which is a fiction based on pure, pure fiction. And I'll explain that as we go. Even the historical Jesus is a fiction. It's, it's, it's a buffoon story uh, for plebeians that go to church you know, and believe that they will be saved rather than knowing that they can save themselves. Uh, or, you know, I mean, salvation is not this ghastly thing that church has concocted anyway. We'll go through what salvation truly is. Sure. But... Um, but this year, 2013, that's a crock. And it, when you turn up in court with the date uh, 21st of November 2013, you're a dead man because they do not acknowledge the AD calendar. They acknowledge the AM calendar. And AD and AM spell Adam. And... We are now in the year 5,774 AM. So we are turning up in court with the current date, which you should never date any document because then it's dated and it's not now because there is only 
now. This is why people are, are, are landing in jail when they go to court. They're, they're using a, a calendar which in the, in the elite's world doesn't really exist. It's for fools to use. It's for citizens, slaves, um, and, and, and who think that they should have such a lord anyway. You know, are they claiming that by going into court with the year 2013 AD that they have a Lord called Jesus or whoever that Lord is? Because if we're doing that, um, then we are committing fraud. You see, because that calendar is copyrighted anyway <laughs> by the probably the Piso family of Rome, definitely the Flavians, uh, if not some of the Julians, but um, <clears throat> these dynasty founders, they own all the corporations, period. <clears throat> and, the, and the Vatican sits on top of them all, the Holy See. And <clears throat> their true calendar is the Anno Mundi, the year, of the, the year of the world calendar, because they go by the world, not by any lord, for they do not have lords. They are the lords. <laughs> they are our overseers. And how they've done that is when, they, when you're born in a hospital, you are birthed like a ship. And your placenta is the ship, and what's in the placenta is the cargo. And that placenta is kept, or let's put it this way, we forget to take it home. We leave it behind. So it's someone else's property now. And they do advertise the birth of the child in the newspaper so that, Anyone who has lost such um, a missing uh, <laughs> item can report it to the authorities and claim it. <laughs> it's all right cargo. there in front of you. Wow. It's all right there. And that's why you get birthed at a dock or when you are birthed, there is a doctor there. And the hospital gets $5,000 spot fee to get you registered real nice and quick for good old Rome so that they can baptize you and you belong to the universal church. The whole world belongs. They're all Catholic. Everyone who has a birth certificate, i.e. death certificate, is Catholic universal period. And, and all and, our holidays uh, are pretty much Catholic, even in Halloween, every holiday, whether you're Catholic or atheist or, or Jewish, if you celebrate Halloween and all these different holidays, uh, whether they're Valentine's, those are all Catholic holidays, correct, Santos? Yeah, which have, okay. um, yeah, they are, because Catholic means universal, and these are our universal holidays, because 1st of November, Halloween, is a cross-quarter day. So the Vatican... Um, posing as the universal church. In other words, it is making a claim. It's saying, this is the Catholic church. This is the universal church. So if for them to make that claim, they would have to absorb all the teachings that have ever gone before them because they cannot stick. They, can, they can't say that you know, they have this unique little teaching. They have to absorb everyone's teachings because they're claiming they're making a claim to be universal. Hence, Halloween will be acknowledged in the Catholic Church. All the holy dates of antiquity will be acknowledged by them. They have to. They can't but. And this is why when you know the ecliptic and you know what's going on on the ecliptic, see, I know what November the 1st means. It's a cross-quarter day, middle of the fall, middle of August, uh, so uh, of autumn. So... <clears throat> So it has significance. It must have significance. And all, all the holy dates on the ecliptic, when you study the ecliptic and watch it, and you know your solstices and equinoxes and cross-quarter days, etc., then you will know all the events that are happening in the Bible and what they mean, because they're all based on the ecliptic. Everything that happens in all of the holy writings that you have ever, ever read in your life, whether it be a gospel, a mythology, a nursery rhyme, a fairy tale. I've proven this in my videos ad nauseum, ad infinitum, that they are all to be found on the ecliptic. Let me all ask you this, Santos. They're doing basically a, a magic where it's on the as above, so below, because as you say, it's on the ecliptic and it deals with you know, the solar system and, and the different uh, holidays are in conjunction with with all of that. But they're also tying in uh you know the martyrs of the church and the different saints 
it's all kind of they're they're putting like the the so below which would be them and their souls with the has above am i correct yeah 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 what they've done is they've stolen our um so they've made an original copy in hospital that's the placenta and the dna they steal off us and we are the genuine artifact you see the genuine artifact now has an original copy and a silent partner in crime and this is where they make the this is why the policeman can drag you into the the station handcuff you you know lock you up overnight drag you into a court all of this stuff is going on they can steal your children etc because they're registered we registered you see or or rather we you know we 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 forgot to reclaim our lost property see all, to, to get out of this babylon the great this system of perversion and stealing our spirit as 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 above and our bodies as below via the birth certificate um the only way out is to reclaim our lost property period that's it because because otherwise they will always have a claim they will always have some of our property and they will always be able to you know uh, resort to our registered papers and this is why they they are always require id before they you know <laughs> punish us <laughs> because what what's going on is the system is ecclesiastical the world that we live in is an ecclesiastical system first and foremostly political political is second you see and um the religion is first it's a religion it's a religious system of it's black magic it's inversive um and perverse really but what they've done is they've in, inverted all of the good holy and beautiful energy of nature and um you know harnessed it and used it against us and it's pure black magic what they're doing by giving us a certificate which gives us rights uh, sorry <laughs> takes away rights <laughs> but gives us um services benefits and privileges you see so, they don't t- tell you the true definition of services benefits and privileges yeah and santos you believe in basically where your mortal beings uh, immortal beings correct absolutely so these same people that would be in the system or serving the system, whether they're in the church or in the government in high positions controlling us, they too could be reborn in the system as citizens or as controlled people under their own system later on, or are they able to control this now? Do you know? Um what to control as far the, as coming back you know uh, the Im- immortality when i study it you know I, it seems like there's no control as far as when someone can come back you know you could be reborn santos in i don't know a no, hundred years or 500 years i know i'm going a little bit off your your specialty i don't know if you know anything about that or uh as far as the immortality and coming back and if you're able to control that i mean can oh, you for sure okay oh, well, karma and and rebirth and reincarnation has been totally and totally misunderstood by many 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 schools of thought out there. Even the Buddhists, they are in error. You know, the the conventional Buddhist teaching now is is in error um, because we do not just we're not forced you know to reincarnate and we don't just you know die reincarnate die reincarnate. We, this our oversoul has control of all of this, and we choose these experiences as we go, and we will be immortal. We have the seeds of immortality. We are not yet um, immortal because we can still <clears throat> we can still slip up and lose that immortality. It would take a lot, a lot of evil to do that. And some people are on that path where they've gone beyond the point of no return. And this is why evil, even though we are now in the age of Aquarius, there's a new age upon us uh, since 21st of December 2012, the galactic crossing. Um, we, have, <clears throat> we, have <clears throat> we, we have passed the psychic mutable waters <clears throat> of Pisces. 
We are now in the new age. <clears throat> Jupiter no longer the tyrant rules over us. It's now Uranus and Saturn. <clears throat> and, and the powers that be, they know this, but this is why there's still evil persisting. You know, there's still vaccinations, chemtrails, wars, and all of that crap. Because <clears throat> some of these ent entities that are on this planet have gone beyond the point of no return. Is and there's no point repenting. There's no point. And so they will persist until we deal with them. Isn't there a, an end date to this, this magic? Don't they have to comply with this and eventually put an end to it and, and let us free from Babylon and under this bondage? I yeah, mean, they, they write about it themselves in the Old Testament and, of course, the New Testament, which would be the new law under Rome, correct? Exactly. The New okay. Testament is all about the new fictional Anno Domini calendar of the land of the dead. And whoever shall claim that Lord Jesus Christ and its calendar and walk into to court as a dead man is a fool. <laughs> because that's how they've killed us, giving us a fictional Jesus, a fictional saviour. For we, we are the true Christs. Crystals, beings of light, children of God. God is light. And, um, and they've stolen that from us, created... Rome did this. Rome totally literalized the scriptures, the gospels, which are nothing other than, you know, well, gospels. <laughs> they're not histories. They're stories, gospels, um, songs, tragedies. In fact, that's the correct word for a gospel. Gospel, it means goat spell. God's spell, but the root of it is goat. Goat is Capricorn. Capricorn is on the ecliptic, as is Aries, the lamb, um, in March. Capricorn in December, the goat, um, dominates the solstice. The lamb, or the sheep, Aries, dominates the equinox. So we have two, the sheep and the goats, vying for control of the ecliptic. One is on the solstice, one is on the um, equinox. That's where he says, God, or, or Jesus says, I have the, I think the goats on my right hand and the sheep on my left, correct? Exactly, because okay. when the sun is on the ecliptic, it separates the sheep from the goats, and the goats are always the evil ones because Capricorn is earth, earth is our sensual nature, Aries is fire, that is our mystical nature, our, um, well, incorrectly, what we, what we call spiritual. But let me use that, that term. It's mystical, really, but let's call it spiritual. Aries is fire. And all, al along the ecliptic, there are four cardinal signs. We've all already mentioned two of them, Capricorn and Aries. Aries is fire. Capricorn is earth. The other two will be the other two elements, air and water. And Cancer is water, and Libra is air. This is our nature. This is the cross that we are bearing. Our spiritual, mixed with our physical Capricorn, mixed with our intellectual Libra air, mixed with our emotional water Cancer body. So we have a physical body, Capricorn, which is separated from our spiritual, mystical body, Aries fire, and this is why the sun separates the sheep from the goats, because the goats are in reference to people that are earthy, materialistic, don't have much spiritual values in their life at all. But Aries, that's the, that's the Lamb of God. That's, that's in the head, in the cerebrum, whereas, and it rules the cerebrospinal system, whereas Capricorn rules the, the knees and the skeletal system. The structure, the earthy. So Aries above in the high ram, in, you know, in the cranium, the cerebrum, can boast the spirituality of the body. So this is why the sun separates the sheep from the goats, because the sheep manifest spiritual qualities, for it is the cerebrum, the ram, the ruler of the body. And so... Um, no, and we had, uh, I, I know you had mentioned this before, Jesus was crucified at, at Golgotha, which is the place of the skull. What's the meaning of that? 
Well, this is where the Son of Man, the Son of Manna, gets crucified at Golgotha, Calvary. The It's in reference to the biochemical process of salvation. You see, salvation works like this. It's an inner it's the inner Christ, the Christ within that we raise up and we raise up to the to the, the ram Aries, the cerebram. So see the journey the epic journey of all gospels begins in the head, in the cranium. Head is heaven heaved up. And there is a secretion from the claustrum, the holy claustrum, otherwise known as the Santa Claus. And this secretion is called the oil, the wax, the manna, the son of man, son of manna, the chrism, the Christos, the bread, the soma, etc., etc., the nectar of the gods, shall I go on, no need. This fluid, the cerebrospinal fluid, gets differentiated as it descends toward its destination is the sacrum at the bottom of the spine, the five fused bones of the sacrum, and they are on a hinge. They are pivoting on like what's like a like a hinge, and they this bone pivots back and forth, and it pumps the oil back up to Calvary. Golgotha, the cranium, so that it can be transmuted and sublimated. And this is how it happens. The oil first gets differentiated in the third ventricle, just below the claustrum. And the pineal gland and the pituitary body are there. And they change or differentiate this fluid into two different fluids. One is positive, one is negative. The pineal gland produces a positive fluid, golden honey, hence the honey. The pituitary body secretes a milky negative substance and sends it downward down the ping, uh, the uh, Ida nerve, whereas the pineal gland sends this down the pingala. And this is your positive and negative fluid, which comes from Joseph and Mary, the pineal gland and the pituitary gland. And as they reach all the other glands of the body, the thymus, the, um, uh, <clears throat> well, let's, um, I'm going, going blank now, but uh, thyroid, etc., okay. it gets further differentiated as it, as it proceeds down the pneumogastric nerve system supplying uh, life and energy to all of the vital organs. This is called the vagus nerve because it, it is vagrant. It is the tree of life. And so as this oil proceeds, it, 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 um, <clears throat> it uh, arrives at the sacrum and it is then uh, remains there to be, uh, to be ascended. It must ascend, you see. And at the bottom of the spine are the two uh, serpents, the uh, Kundalini and the Kundabatha. These are the uh, spiraling helical energy that, that ascend up Jacob's ladder, the spinal column. And um, Is that essentially and, your, your central nervous system, Santos? Yes, it is. Okay, gotcha. Yes, and the, the, the glands you were, you were talking about in regards to science, that would be the the are not science esoteric or the occult would be your chakras correct absolutely all okay, of the great. cerebrospinal nervous system uh, which is the fully the most developed one on the planet this is what makes sets humans apart and prepares them for the hero ship that is next to humanity see between god and man is the hero you know ulysses Jesus, Hercules, um, Pythagoras, Plato, because these are ones that have left behind the lust and the commerce of the world, separated themselves and returning their spirit to its source, to its cause. You know, magnetic, still, white, undivided, God light. 
as opposed to divided, polarized, electric, negative and positive, two sexed, illusory light, which is the son of God. So that's, that's just a little bit of theology for you there. That's exactly who God is and the son of God is electricity. Magnetism is God. All knowing, omniscient, omnipresent and um, immortal light. It's, uh, it has all power. It has all knowing. And that's who we are. So we, you know, we exist on the causal plane as well. And Santos, and we, as far as we're concerned, sorry to interrupt you, in regards to this light and this energy, this energy is all, all one. So whether it be sexual energy, spiritual energy, or mental energy, whatever we're expending, it's all of that same energy. And I've heard you talk about this before, and I want you to touch on this because this is a very important subject I know in the world today because it is abused time and time again, and, and there's a lot of people out there that might need help and to get educated, and that's on sex and relation to the energy that you're talking about. And uh, can you educate people out there on how important it is not to abuse it and not to masturbate away this energy, your, your life force? Well, I, w I would rather, I would say rather that, that they should um, sublimate, transmute and conserve that energy, not to e avoid sex. Um, you shouldn't, see this is what uh, they teach you in church, oh it's bad and it's don't do this and don't do that and all these don'ts. In, in, behind all of this erroneous advice that they offer you, there is some truth. And that is, we must be responsible with sexual energy. Whatever our inclination is, whether we are heterosexual, whatever, you know, whatever. Um, it, it, what, what the hero learns, or the Christ, or the one who is living a moderate life, is he learns to balance and, and not always to discharge the sexual energy. And... And it's, it's all sex, the whole universe. It's all, it's all, <laughs> it's all sexual energy. Electrical energy is all sexual. It's because it is. It's polarized. It's male and female. You see, and this is what gives rise to the erroneous concept of duality. Uh, yeah, and let me let me touch there on that real quick, Santos, because I, I noticed that today with my wife, and I, I want to relate this to people out there if they're you know touching their wife. It's almost. No matter what, if you're kissing and holding each other, it's almost like an energy that goes from your, your head and your lips down to your, your sexual organs. There, there's absolutely almost nothing you can do to stop it. It's just all one kind of energy, and it, it's hard to control it once that starts, right, Santos? And that's the problem a lot of people have, and then just discharging it all the time. Um, but well, again, well, it's a yeah. beautiful thing. Okay, go ahead. Well, well, well. See, yes. Um, there's two kinds of sex. There's loving sex and there's lustful sex. So, what what the moderate philosoph philosophical hero type is inclined to do, of course, is to practice loving sex. It's tantric sex, where there's no need to have a physical orgasm. You have a spiritual orgasm. It's an air orgasm rather than an earth orgasm, where you um, discharge you know, earthly, earthly substance, liquids, real physical liquids. You don't need to, you know, there's, it's not necessary. Um, and the, the orgasm that all of these um, people are lusting for and, and so, so wanting experience to experience is, is, well, it's a beautiful experience, the orgasm, but it's only momentary. It's only like about three or four seconds that split moment where we experience our true blissful Christ cosmic nature. This is why animals and humans really want to feel the earthly orgasm. It's because it's so beautiful and it and reminds us of our original true causal nature. For that's how we feel. The, the, the feeling of an orgasm is exactly how we, we the bliss is how we will per um, perpetually and perennially um, exist and feel forever as immortal beings of light. That's how immortal beings of light um, actually you know, uh, live in that kind of orgasmic bliss. But, but see, there is only a certain amount of fluid that the cerebrum 
produces in this body. And so once we discharge and eliminate all that fluid, you die. That's how death comes upon mankind, by eliminating those secretions. Those secretions are supposed to be conserved and sublimated. See, if you don't, if you don't conserve energy, and sexual energy is the same, it goes for all kinds of energy, um, you can't use it for higher ends, for higher purposes, because it's like money in the bank. If you get a million dollars today and spend it tomorrow, you can't spend it the day. You can't spend anything the day after. And some people are inclined to spend all their money. <laughs> like I love that analogy, Santos. That's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And other people, oh, they're a lot more shrewd, and 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 they know about tomorrow. You see, they sort of put their pennies away, and they conserve that currency. Currency is energy. So they realize the power of the energy of money and they go away and they put it in something called a bank <laughs> or a bank account. <laughs> and so they can draw on it tomorrow and the day after and the day after and, and they can actually get interest on it too and et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> and what you're talking about, of course, Santos, is, is your energy. That's your most valuable currency, correct? Sexual energy is the most powerful energy in the universe. And, and we have a world of people that just go, oh, I feel sexy. How can I discharge this feeling? There's a girl over there, or there's a boy over there, or whatever. You know, whether they, you know, discharge it via masturbation or whatever practices they have, they they are actually doing injury to themselves because they are aging very, very quickly by you know eliminating their beautiful bodily fluids, which can 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 if practiced correctly, proper sex. You can live forever. <laughs> so I, I actually encourage, you know, I don't discourage sex. I encourage sex because it's it's all about sex, dancing and, and sex. These are things that are condemned in churches, of course, because they're a pack of morons. <laughs> um, yeah, I love them nonetheless. <laughs> I love churchgoers just as much as anyone else. But basically, they're just 99.9% moron, you know, um, and that's sad. Because they can change all of that in, in a matter of days. All they've got to realize is that they have Christ within. And their own scriptures tell them that. Colossians 1, 26, 27, for instance, explains this. The Apostle Paul says the ancients, you know, uh, weren't told these glorious secrets. You know, they're looking for Christ's without. But I'm sharing with you that there's only one Christ, and that is the Christ within and this is the sacred secret. And he was referring to the chrism, the chrism of the oil of the cerebrospinal fluids. You see, because, because this son of man must be lifted up. Remember Jesus, when speaking to Nicodemus, he said, what, do you not know how to be born again? And you are a teacher in Israel. He said, no one has ascended to heaven except he who has descended the son of man well he's talking about this fluid that comes from the classroom it's called the son of man you see there's many names for it and it's it's short for the son of manna because it's the manna from heaven our father who art in heaven head give us our daily bread <laughs> you see I, I mentioned before that that um, <clears throat> Jesus is called the bread of life the bread of heaven yeah, the bread of head, because it secretes from there, gets differentiated, remains at the sacrum until the moon transits your sun sign. So every month as the moon goes around the ecliptic, and when she enters your sun sign, she plants a psychophysical germ in the solar plexus, and that is um, Virgo, Bethlehem, the house of bread, the belly the solar plexus, the third chakra along the cerebrospinal system. And from there, that son of man must be lifted up. As it gets lifted up the 33 bones of the vertebrae, and it gets crucified at the top of the spinal column after 33 bones, after ascending thir the, Jacob's ladder, the ladder of heaven. And then, and then it reaches the head, heaven, 
and there it vibrates a thousand times more than when it was at the sacrum because it has reached the high heaven, the third ventricle. It remains in the cave of Brahma for three days inactive or dead, so to speak, as Jesus remains in the grotto. Then it resurrects and it is, you see, it gets crucified, but it gets resurrected after three days because that, that oil vibrating a thousand times more, higher, is now, is now in the third ventricle and the pineal gland and the, and the pituitary gland have arced, an electrical arc, and they have, um, now the pineal gland is producing a fluid that is like a supercharged dimethyl tryptamine called the blood of the Christ, which saves because now the body is producing through the pineal gland a fluid which purifies the blood. And once the blood is purified, it's the blood of the Christ, the new wine. Uh, you see, this is how Jesus turns water into wine because until such time, our cerebrospinal system is considered dead, unconscious, water. And so Jesus gets turned into wine because wine is fermented grape. It's processed. And so the water, the water is changed. You see, the pineal gland now produces a new fluid. It's new wine. And this is why we drink the new wine that, that Jesus gives us, you see, in the gospel. So and, we're, we're uh, drinking the fermented wine, the bad stuff, <laughs> right? No, no, fermented okay. is good. Okay, fermented gotcha. is good, as, as, it, as are fermented foods. They are the true food for, for human beings. You see, if you want to get onto good foods, I would be eating sprouts, sprouted grains, and fermented foods. And you can live on that, just on that. That's, that would be probably the most beneficial superfood on the planet. And, um, you know, no one can argue that. You know, uh, all of these dried superfoods that you buy online, they're pretty much useless. Um, you need live superfoods, i.e. sprouts and fermented foods like sauerkraut and stuff like that. These give you probiotics and these, these really, really give you energy and vim. Are you a vegetarian, uh, Santos? Yeah, absolutely, okay. for sure, for sure. Yeah. How long have you been a vegetarian? About uh, six years now, and uh, yeah, okay. six years. Yeah, and I've recently just gone onto the um, sprouted and um, fermented foods. But but see, this this new wine it it purifies the blood and cleanses the blood, and and you can live forever. By doing this process, by lifting the Son of Man. Remember, Jesus said, as uh, he continued saying, to be born again, um, he said in 1 John chapter 3, uh, he says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, Nicodemus, if you want to be born again. So in the because same... In the same breath, we could not be born again if we don't live correctly. Is that what you're saying, Santos? Yeah, what would happen is we would have to um, go through this illusory incarnated body of suffering again to learn how to alkalize the body and raise, lift up the Son of Man. We're here to do that. That's what the, we've come here to do the magnum opus, the good work, not to get jobs in the uh, military industrial complex, you know, i.e. commerce and, <laughs> and all that crap that's going on out there. We're here to do the good work within and lift up the son of man because if we don't, we cannot escape suffering. And, and we only require three things, sat, chit, ananda, bliss, existence, and consciousness. Do you believe all knowledge is relearned, like Plato had said? Meaning, Santos, you know, your knowledge is just extraordinary, and and it seems like every time I listen to you, a, a year down the road, you're, it's like you've you've leaped ten years in knowledge, and I, I'm not kidding. You know, do you believe that this is just knowledge relearned, and you're tapping that inner gnosis? 
you know, that Gnosticism of Santos that has lived before because you are doing and practicing what you're preaching? I'm not preaching, but yeah. teaching. <laughs> Yep, okay. yep. My, my, my cerebrum is just an extension of yours, brother. Uh, I am you and you are me. I'm remembering these particular things pr probably slightly earlier than some of the listeners, um, but you and the listeners will be remembering things slightly earlier than me. We need each other. And I know that you need this information. Hence, I make myself available. I get up early in the morning and you know and do these shows because I'm sick of hearing the idiots and the fools out there that are sitting on their soapboxes in the media, the talking heads, talking lies and bullshit and deceiving people. So you know, I'm expending myself sometimes at the expense of my health to get the word out how it's supposed to be taught correctly correctly via direct knowledge not opinions and and thinking and, and thinking through knowledge thinking and trivium and all of that stuff you know that's all noise intellectual yeah. noise it's all that rational and logical and 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 that's all crap the meditating philosopher the hero has already understood that it is all knowing so rather than relearning as you said Plato refers to remembering. When we remember all the members, see, what the knowledge that I have, which is direct knowledge, I have acquired through meditation and intuition, left brain and right brain, rather, uh, sorry, I should say, through, you know, reading and an eternal list of books, you know, I've been reading since I was a kid, um, on theology, astrology, astronomy, um, music, trivia, uh, quadrivium, mostly quadrivium, since I was very, very young. You know, I've bypassed totally, not that I didn't do the, the, the trivium, you must do the trivium, but if you get stuck on the trivium and you don't get into the quadrivium from the left brain to the right brain, you're just another one of these intellectual idiots that that are condemned in the Bible, for the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God, and he traps them in their snares. You hear all these great thinkers and intellectuals. You can hear them, you know, intellectualizing themselves in, in, into, into pits, <laughs> you know, because they're, they're, they're idiots. They're left-brain academics. Yeah, and, yeah. and unfortunately, just... Santos, let me, let me just say that uh, in the Gnosticism in, in this field, there's a lot of that, and, and I concur there, definitely. So I agree. Oh, yeah, and they, and, and they jump on on the radio and everything and they, they, they give themselves to the world as teachers. And, you know, you can hear from the dry academic approach of the, in their voice that, you know, something don't, don't give. Because if you're going to pretend to, to sound like you've got PhDs and you're educated, um, well, you're not speaking to people's hearts. You know, you're speaking to people's uh, egotistic, you know, um, uh, desire to be recognised as an as an intellectual and a great thinker. You know, never was a great philosopher described as an intellectual. You'll never find in any of the pages of history that Plato or Pythagoras or Hermes were described as intellectuals. They would never stoop to that low level because they were knowers. You know, you just know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You don't. You don't think you know the tr or have the truth, like your 30,000 um, different denominations of Christendom, Christendom. You know, you've got Jehovah's Witnesses telling you that the Mormons are going to hell because they're pedophiles and um, they, they worship Satan, they're pretending to worship Jesus. Then you go to the Mormons and they tell you that the Jehovah's Witnesses are going to hell because it's them that are pedophiles, and they are. Um, and the Catholics also are pedophiles and they're going to hell. And then the Catholics will tell you that all the Protestants are, and the Orthodox will tell you that the, the Protestants are idiots and the Catholics are too, and they're going to hell because we have the right religion and it's registered under such and such a name, you know, uh, the Baptist Eastern 1976 uh, Southern Lake uh, registered denomination. You know, and these idiots think that, you know, Jesus is going to come out of the clouds as a man, return, because he, he never came in the first place. The Romans invented him uh, and, and, and created the character out of pre-existing, you know, heroes, sun heroes with their 12, you know, 
disc eyeballs or apostles. You know, it's interesting how Jesus has 12 apostles and post is what uh, astrological signs were once called, the 12 posts, <laughs> you know, the 12 discs. Yeah, what, what's it mean, Santos, like you have the, the Vatican just announcing this past week that they're going to uh, put the, the bones of St. Peter on display for the first time in history, and then you have also the Pope in the following week going to, to visit Vladimir Putin in Russia. It seems like, you know, there's things that they're putting out there symbolically. So you have this St. Peter who's supposed to be the first Pope, and now they're displaying his bones. Have you, have you, did you hear about that? Are you there, Santos? Ah, yes. Sorry. Okay, no um, problem. I was speaking with a muted mic. Uh, okay. Yes, look, um, I haven't heard this, but um, as you were saying it to me, it's no surprise because I've already explained countless times on countless radio shows since February 11, since the resignation of Pope Benedict, <clears throat> that there's been a changing of the guards. You see, we've had Benedictine and um, Dominican popes for all of history. Now we have a Jesuit pope. Uh, these other ones were Petrine popes. Now we have a Saturnine pope. So we've gone from Peter, Jupiter, G Zeus, Jupiter Zeus, Jesus, Peter, because that's who Jupiter is, Pater Noster, our Father who art in heaven. This is why the pope is a Petrine, or was a Petrine pope. Benedict said on February 11th to the BBC, I can no longer continue to adequately uh, administer the Petrine ministry. And then in the next breath he said, the, he mentioned the boat, the boat of Peter, the ship of Peter. Well, let me explain all this. Peter is Jew Peter, the ruler of Pisces. We have had that Jesus and Peter, same, same thing. They are one and the same character um, for 2,000 years, baptizing us in the waters of Pisces. One fish believes, one fish doubts. You see, the church of Jesus is about believing and doubting. Some doubt and then they believe, and then they go back to doubting, and then they go back to believing, like two dumb fish. Uh, and so <clears throat> what has happened is uh, Pope Francis is a Jesuit pope. These are the black fraternity. Saturn is black. Saturn is the father of Zeus. Remember, Zeus castrated Saturn, but Saturn's always going to get him back because Saturn is Kronos. Kronos is time, and old man time... You see, this is why we have temples. Temples come from tempo. Tempo is time. Time is Kronos. Kronos is Saturn. All temples on this planet are dedicated directly or indirectly to the temple, tempo, master, Saturn. Satan. Satan is the god of this world. So, so that's why Satan is the God of this world because he's the God of time and he who is born in time must perish in time. This is why Saturn, the Grim Reaper, is the one who comes a knocking on your door the night before you die with his sickle and scythe in hand to take away your soul because Jupiter is the one that binds us but Saturn with his scythe in the age of Aquarius, he is the one who loosens us. You see, in the scripture, Jesus says, Peter, Petra, upon this rock, I will build my church. So, the rock that he's talking about is the rock of Pisces. And Peter, Peter is Petra. It's the exoteric church of stone. In other words, it's opposite to the esoteric church of spirit which is the Christ within. So the Christ without is the church of stone, the church of St. Peter, the rock. And that's where all the fools go to worship Jesus, who's never going to save them because he didn't come and he never will return. <laughs> it's a spiritual theme 
It's a literary theme story. And so how does Jupiter, G Zeus, Jupiter Zeus, bind us? Well, a deacon of Pisces is called the band. And it ties the two fish together. It binds them. See, Jupiter is the great legislator. He is the father of religion. Religion is relegare. Legare means to bind the band of Pisces, Jupiter, the great legislator. So the legal system, legare, is, comes from legale. See, to bind, which is, to bind is uh, legare in Latin, but legal is legale. So all you do is you change the L, the, the R into an L. They are interchangeable. And see, Jupiter binds legare, rilegare, religion, and through the legal system, legale, that's why they have church is all about legal language, your doctrines. They call it doctrines and dogmas. It's legalese, right? And so is the bar uses Latin and they use legalese. They don't use English. They use a patented language called legalese. And, and um, these, these inversions and perversions is what we are taught to accept as, as true. You see, so legalese, when you go to... Um, to be turned over by an attorney in court, which is um, the bench, the bank, run by the bar, bail, the church of Satan. You see, this is why attorneys always turn up and represent the crown. The crown, well, no one has a bigger crown than Saturn, Kronos. <laughs> so <laughs> when, you, when you turn up in court and, and anyone that, that turns up and represents the bar, which is backwards for Rab, Rabbi, the sons of Ra, um, rest assured you are going to a temple, a church, and you are out of time because you are operating under the Anno Domini calendar and you have been dead for 3,760 years because the true date is 5,774 Anno Mundi, uh, Kislev, month of Kislev in the Jewish calendar, and so you are turning up dead, and you are bringing back, you are creating joinder with the original copy that they created from the placenta in hospital, and you are giving it life. And so now they can hypothecate your, you know, your person. They can hypothecate that name, because you registered, you gave it over. When you register, you beg to the king, to the regis, you see. Yeah, and they've almost made it so we almost can't get out of the system. You know, you have a baby today, of course, you, you have it in the hospital, and it just seems like it just they you're just fed through the system and there's no way out of it. Is there a way out of it? Having children out of the hospital, what do you suggest people do? Yeah, uh, well, I mentioned the remedy before, and that is to uh, reclaim the uh, lost property, the DNA. It needs to be reclaimed. I have... Uh, I have the paperwork for this. I have two versions of how to reclaim the DNA. For any of the listeners that who would like to do this process, once you reclaim the DNA, you are now a live being. You have, um, you have connected the uh, artificial original copy of the registered person that they created uh, from the hospital, um, you know, leftovers, left behinds, and you have uh, rejoined it with the true, genuine artifact. That's how you do it. Can they find this on your, your website, universaltruthschool.com? No, you can't okay. find it on my website. Uh, I have the documents that I can send via email. Okay, yeah, and, and your website again, Santos, we'll, we'll, at the end of the show, we'll re-announce it, but it's universaltruthschool.com. You can find his email and a contact, a way to contact them there, correct? Yes, universaltruthschool.com, uh, but I would go to Kate of Gaia WordPress uh, website because there 
uh, Kate of Gaia has the documents um, for reclaiming your DNA. So I would issue a moto, motu proprio uh, to the Vatican. That's what I would do. Um, I would notice the Vatican that um, you are wanting to uh, reclaim your property because they own it. It's interesting. You know, I've been talking about uh, DNA a lot lately. It's just been something that uh, has been pulling towards me intuitively to, to research. And, you know, I got my DNA test uh, a couple of years ago. And it was just interesting to see where my family had come from because they didn't even know. You know, it just they were under the spell as well. They were Catholics from from Canada and uh, just totally had no idea. You know, my dad is about to uh, pass away right now. He's 80, 84 years old, and he knows more about, you know, the the queen and, and, and their children and the prince than he does about his own children and his grandchildren. And it's just uh, just crazy. It just it showed proof of how powerful this system is and the spell that they have people under. Yeah, it's it's called uh, it's all the it's the four mon words. Um, Joseph Farrell explained this, this in his book uh, Babylon's Banksters. But the four mon words: monarchy, monopoly, monotheism, and money. That's how they've done it. With those four spells, they have spellbound us in the binding age of Jupiter, Pisces, Jesus, Jupiter, Peter, all of that stuff. Another aspect to the Church of Peter, Petra, rock exoteric physical buffoon church is its paper aspect. You see, um, the papacy is the paper C. The holy C is nothing but the two-dimensional world of paper. This is what's going on. This is why the Pope, the papacy, is they are the king, the kings of paper, you see. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Pardon all the puns, but I'm having fun with this. I'm having fun today because <laughs> sometimes I get aggressive, you know. I, you know, I get fed up with all the bullshit and I really want to give a good show and give as much jam-packed information, packed information as, as possible, even though I'm jumping from subject to subject. So please bear with me. But um, paper, you see, um, Babylon, Baba is father in, you know, Aramaic and in the Middle East, Baba. In Italy, we say Papa. So B and P are interchangeable. So you, you, you write down the word Baba, B-A-B-A, -A, and you've got the word Father, okay? Now, you just grab the stem of the B and you, and you slip it down and you turn it into a P, and that's how the Italians call Father, Papa, P-A-P-A. -A. So they've gone from B-A-B-A -B -A, to P-A-P-A, -A, Papa, Papa. And that's Pope. That's how you say Pope. Now, here's a Pontifex bridge built. Uh, here's the Pontifex Maximus. Well, the ponds above the medulla oblongata in the midbrain, in the cranium where we get, where the Christ, the son of man, gets crucified in order to reactivate the dormant, bra dormant brain cells in the cerebrum, and we have activation, the higher mind, we have returned to the kingdom of our Father who art in heaven, etc., etc., uh, born again, etc., etc. Um, he, is, he is pretending to be that Pons, Pontifex Max Maximus, because Pons means bridge, bridge builder. And the Pons is in between the cerebellum the Taurian brain, and the higher brain, the high ram, the cerebrum, the cerebrum, Aries, in, who is in head heaven. And so the pons is in the middle. And so the Pope is acting as that pons, the bridge, the bridge between man and God. And he's an interloper. And the papacy, you see, the papacy, is the other aspect of Jupiter, because Jupiter is in Greek called Pater Andron Te Theon Te, which means Father, Papa, Paper, Father of Men, Pater Andron. 
right? So that's his Greek name. He's always been known as that, the Father, Jupiter. Jupiter is the Father of, he's the God of Gods, he's the Father, he's all of these titles, you know, he grabs all the titles to himself, Jupiter, steals them off Kronos, his father, and, but now he has to hand them over because we've gone from Pisces to Aquarius at the end of last year. And see, and see, on February 11th, when Benedict resigned and said, I can't do this Peter's boat stuff anymore, this Petrine stone paper stuff anymore, right? And then he hands over on, at tw midday February 11th, and at 5.59, exactly six hours later, Zeus, Thor, the god of thunderbolts, Peter, Jupiter, Zeus, sends a thunderbolt and it strikes the Vatican at 5.59. The Vatican, St. Peter Square uh, camera uh, has recorded it. You can go to YouTube and see it. So Jesus or Jupiter retires on the same day as above, so below, as Benedict does. And he says to the BBC, nah, no more of this Petrine Peter's boat stuff. Can't do it. And then um, come in the Saturnian Jesuits and everything is changed. Already, July 11th and August 8th um, this year, Pope Francis issued two motu proprios. In the first one, he went after and the, um, the crime by dismantling the fictional paper Petra system Take note, guys, because this is what's happened, and most people have, have not even, because they're eating hamburgers and, you know, McDonald's and going to the football and, and wondering what Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt are up to next in their glossy magazines, they haven't noticed what's, they're not paying attention and they're not realising what's going on. And what's going on is there's been a changing of, a, of the guard. That system, that legal legare, rilegare, religion and 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 fictional paper two-dimensional system is over. The Pope himself said there is no protection anymore for the juridic person. And then in the second letter, he went after, as I knew, I've, I've known this for a long time now, many years that this will happen, he has gone after, in his second motu proprio, the um, so-called, so-called, uh, non-charitable and um, non-profit or charitable organisations. Oh yeah, what a crock! As if they're really into you know charity. No, 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 no. Not even. Look, the Red Cross and all of these buffoons. These are all money makers making blasphemous, evil, siphoning vampire organisations. All of them, never give them a cent. Oxfam, all of these, these are all evil, putrid, Catholic-run, pedophile-run, and, and all the money goes to a bunch of, a small bunch of pedophiles, a handful that are running the whole banking system. But are they on um, their way out because of this, though? Are those the old finished. guard? Okay, so... They, that's, it's so, the old guard. So basically what I'm gathering, Santos, is is because of the massive world that we live in and, of course, the... The structures of government, the different layers in in the military, and and who was in the old guard there. You have secret societies. I mean, this web is huge. This pyramid that they control, and of course, from the top down, they're they're having these edicts from the Pope. So when he says this, when the Pope, all these eleven days, of course, on July eleventh, two thousand thirteen, Pope Francis issues a legal edict to all public officials of the Roman Curia. When he says that he's addressing all the public officials of the Roman Curia, that's essentially almost every single government in the world, correct? That is the whole world. Okay. The paper sea, the Holy Sea, which the Holy Sea is the Commonwealth and the Crown. But, but see, there's a war now between the Vatican and the Bar because they they're trying to all of these organizations are trying to run this slave ship um via the um the all caps name see i think it's the vatican owns the all caps name which which trumps all the rest of them and then the bar owned the initial cap 
at nine. And they created so there's the a bar, correct? Yeah, well, the Vatican really, really uh, allows the bar to operate outside of their jurisdiction, but but they can trump the bar any time. You see, the bar, you know, the temple bar is really sort of um, its own entity altogether, but but they can be reeled in by the Vatican easily because the Vatican truly, truly owns the original system, and the system goes back thousands of years. They inherited it from the Babylonians. It's it's Babylon Mark II, rest assured. And, and Baba, have, have different tribes taken it over at, at various times? So this isn't the original? Is this like a hybrid kind of system that we're in now as far as the leaders of, of Rome? Yeah, and this is how it happened, okay? okay. Um, they, they, the priest class that um, when Babylon was destroyed, the priests went to Pergamon in uh, Turkey, in uh, Asia Minor, Middle East there, uh, and then from there they went um, and they followed the Etruscan path to Rome, and they founded a great priesthood. This is why Rome became so great, because, because of its priesthood that came from Babylon, and this system of Baba patriarchy, Papa. You see, it's it's not the original Earth system. On Earth, we were we were formerly matriarchal forever, and then all of a sudden, this um, abhorrent, evil inversion of patriarchy visited the Earth about three three and a half to five thousand years ago, and Rome is just the last incarnation, the fourth um, captivity, according to the Jews. Um, on this planet, and it's now finished. It is now. It is now. Uh, Pope Francis put an end to it all, and this is how what he's put an end to. When the Romans f first founded Rome with their priesthood, the first major blow to freedom came in the days of Nero, uh, because when he burnt. Rome down, just as um, England, R uh, London was burnt down in 1666 when the, six, when the Sestwi KV system was implemented in London, the year after the fire of London. Well, Nero, the year after the fire of Rome, implemented the first true Sestwi KV system. And what he did was he changed the laws so that all the citizens now, slaves of Rome, um, had to, if they wanted to, you know, upgrade their status in the citizenshipery, <laughs> the slave ship, they would have to notify the government, the authorities. They would have to notify them and say, hey, look, um, I'm a man of flesh and blood. I'm not this person, you see. Uh, so you can have this person back, this commercial entity. Um, thank you very much. I'll will do as the gypsies do. I will have none of your papers, Rome, and um, and be free. See, some people chose to keep their citizenship because they wanted the um, privileges. You know, like um, the high-ranking officials of the of the cult of Rome. You know, they had the highest-paid prostitutes. They could. They had all of the best the money could give them. So it was worth having. You know, a um, belonging to the Roman cult and um, belonging to having a citizenship um, in this big uh, club, you see, because you have benefits. And some people love those benefits of money, big houses, prostitutes, uh, and etc., etc. And that's the only way that Rome has been able to grow to the extent that it has, through bribing, through money, through stealing the money off, you know, People like Carthage, the Dacians, the Gauls, England, you know, the, the Celts. Um, I mean, they annexed the rest of the world. Then they, then they sent Columbus over to annex the Americas. And they sent um, Captain Cook to annex all of the islands and lands of the Pacific. And so the whole world has been enslaved by this system. But there's a war um, between who thinks they own the name the fictional juridic name, and, um, you know, because they all think they own it. Because what happened was after Nero, then you've got Constantine and Eusebius, and they further doctored the law and the legal system and history and the church and the donation of, of Constantine. This is the document 
um, which has enslaved us because we pay Peter's pence through the donation of Constantine. Then Theodosius at the end of the 4th century, uh, then Justin in the 6th century changed the legal system further, then, um, well, I, I forgot to mention Diocletian before Constantine, but then the Pippins uh, and Charlemagne, then um, we had uh, the papal bull of uh, Boniface VIII in the 13th century, that's the first real first express trust that was created in history in 1302. Then they went after the Knights Templar five years later and killed um, um, Peter, Peter Mo, um Yeah, Jacques uh, de la Mo de la Mo Yeah, de, 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 Mo de Molay. Yeah, yeah, de Jacques de Molay. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, not Peter. Jacques de Molay, um, five years after this... Um, this system, you see, what what happened there between those five years, 1302 and 1307, was they conspired to somehow uh, either work together, you know, behind the scenes and pretend to uh, to um, be not working together, and and so what happened was either the Vatican acquired the intellectual property of the Knights Templar and subverted it, or they um, went. Um, and working together because immediately after that what happened was they started to expand Rome's territories and annexations by sending a uh, Knights Templar uh, Columbus uh, overseas and um, when he returned they signed the um, the Treaty of uh, Tor Tor Torcedillas and uh, gave over all of the territories to the Vatican. Now, so what happens is, is now we have this vast holy sea, and people, persons, live on that two-dimensional paper sea and subscribe to it by registering and have death certificates called birth certificates and are citizens or slaves. What do, what, do race, what do races have to play into this, Santo? Sorry to interrupt you. I wanted to go into a little bit. I know you, you're a busy guy. You have a show coming up, so we only got about 10 minutes left here. I wanted to go in the difference, if you, could, uh, if you have knowledge there, in, in regards to the, the Greek Byzantine Empire and the Roman. So you have basically the Roman Latins in, in Italy and Rome, and then you have the Byzantine Empire, which are the Greeks. Those are two different races. Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. Sure. Because because Diocletian was the one who first divided Rome in such a way, and it was a wise move, and it's what eventually saved Rome, because in 410, when Alaric crossed the Alps and um, sacked Rome, um, Constantine... Uh, Const, um, sorry, um, Constantinople, which was, well, it's called Inst Istanbul now, but <laughs> um, after Diocletian, it was renamed by Constantine, Constantinople, and he actually went there and ruled from there over Rome. He preferred Constantinople. So, but um, that's how Rome survived, because it was in the east and it was in the west, and the western empire survived for a thousand years. So, so Rome, but all the way. See, we haven't finished the the line of um, of enslavement from from the days of the Jesuits. See, then the Jesuits came on the scene and they further adopted the legal system and history. And then, of course, uh, <clears throat> only eighty years after they discovered the Mayan calendar by the conquest of the Americas, the Jesuits. Um, gave us the Gregorian updated Julian calendar. And that is the true Anno Domini calendar that the Jesuits have copyrighted that we are under. Hence, anyone who goes to court with the AD calendar date is uh, playing with death. You are declaring that you are dead, a fool, an imbecile, semen, sperm, 
uh, lost on the holy sea, sea man, seamen. And so they know that you're seamen. You're nothing much more than seamen to be trampled on. Hence, they throw you in jail and steal your property, etc., etc., etc. So um, <clears throat> that was perfected after the fire of London in 1666. And the Bank of England was in 1690, I think it was. Then came the Federal Reserve Act. Then came the bankruptcy of 1933 after the Wall, um, Wall Street collapsed. And now everything, the whole slave ship is run by Wall Street. Um, and DC, London and Rome. And that's it. And they're running this uh, slave ship because they have claim over us via the original copy, the DNA we left behind in the hospital. What's your thoughts on the the rundown of the system? So obviously they're not going to give up control of what they have of the, the power of the world, but at the same time it seems like you'd said there's a changing of the guard. So is it going to be like there's going to be two systems almost ran in parallel? What's your philosophy on this, Santos, to end the show? What what do you see happening in the future? Well, well, I've got another half hour, by the way. I don't have to okay. do the show. I was, I was mistaken. So um, okay, we, sure. can relax. we can relax on that. Um, okay, cool. But, um, yeah, changing of the guard doesn't, mean, doesn't necessarily mean, oh, everything's going to be good now. You know, he's a good man and, and the Catholic Church and all the, the pedophile pimp elite who have been um, profiting from this slavery, you know, behind the curtains... Uh, it doesn't mean they've changed heart. I'm sure many of them have, and they will, and they have to, because they're living on borrowed time. Um, all of their contracts of enslavement have expired on the 21st of December 2012. There are no longer any viable, uh, um, legitimate uh, contracts. They were all illegitimate any, anyway, but um, the whole fictional system of legale and legare, to bind and legal, those, both of those words in Latin share the same root. As I've, as I've explained, that is over. So what I think is going to happen is this. For those who have eyes to see and ears to listen, they know how to get out of the system, reclaim their DNA and act as a king and sovereign because they know who they are, hence the... Um, the fictional paper C has got nothing on them. And I think that um, the system is going to honour their decision to, to have grown up and to decide on an individual level to be self-determined and to not need any government to wipe our bottoms anymore. We don't need a queen. Thank you very much for your services in the past. You are no longer required. Your services are empty and superficial. They are evil and destructive. And it's just a military-industrial complex. Those people there, I believe, will be respected and will be the first ones out of the system. And they will be the leaders that will follow all the sleeping sheeple and the dead shall awaken. The dead are the ones who belong to the dead holy sea because the Pope has already given us disclaimer. We, there's no use... There's no use trying to, you know, get recuperations for all of this because they've already told us that it was already an empty sea. They're not going to they send us an email? No. <laughs> press release because, on CNN, right? <laughs> no, they're just going to turn around and say, well, you dumbasses, we told you that it was empty. We told you that it was a holy sea. It's got holes all over it. No, you it, know? Yeah, it's right there in front of us, and it, it seems like there's a – there's actually is press releases coming out of the Vatican telling us, right? <laughs> so – well, they have to because we've busted them. Once a, once a fraud is exposed, it is null and void, nunk, pro tunk, prunk. Is that the Wizard uh, of Oz, like the, 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 the no. allegorical lifting up the veil? That, that's it, Wizard of Oz. That's what we're doing. Absolutely. And that's when the movie ends, doesn't it? Right? You look behind the curtain. Oh, shikes. You know, the Emperor has no clothes. Wow. <laughs> Always suspected that anyway. All right. Well, let's get on with business, shall we? And and all of these dunces will will realise that they've been, you know, dunces, i.e., you know, uniformed policemen that just tasered someone because, you know, 
they had the wrong ID on them or, you know, did five kilometres over the limit or something like that. Tomorrow, when, when they open their eyes, they're going to they're gonna pay for all their sins. In other words, they're going to just, they're going to be shocked at all of the crimes that they did just because they were receiving a pay, following orders, and had a uniform and a badge. And, and when you talk about, you know, the Rome or the Vatican being at the top of the, the pyramid, you didn't say that, but essentially being in control of all and understanding that they knew these things were happening, they based this on free will, meaning if I could get my way as far as the Vatican way and, and conquer these countries and these guys are willing to give up their soul and, and do all these things for material gain and earthly gain and kill children and, and do whatever, that they're okay with that. Yeah. <clears throat> Because it's free will on our behalf. That's what I'm saying, Santos. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So they presume. It's all based on presumptions, you see. Unless we – they can come along and say, hey, I've got your property. I created a name out of it, and um, you know, we've got a claim on it. Unless you say, oh, no, 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 hang on. I'm the genuine artifact. I realize you have a genuine co uh, uh, a, an original copy here, sir, but thank you very much. I'll take that back. Because I am the genuine artifact, and I don't want to leave any lost property around. So, thank you very much. You see, now, they give us plenty of chances to do that. You can do that before the age of seven with your children. You can, you can say, oh, look, thanks, government, for your benefits, privileges, and services, but we wish um, to main, um, maintain and keep all of our rights intact our universal, divine, natural right. So thank you for your citizenship, but you, know, you can shove it up your backside, sir. Um, and, and we've got seven years to do that, but how many parents do that? Besides, we don't have to bring our children uh, to hospitals which are run by the Knights of Malta, um, who are the traitors who hand over our, um, our own biological property to, to create an intellectual person. Um, you know, we don't, first of all, you don't have to go to a hospital. You can keep your placenta at home and you can birth your children at home. Why do you have to talk to government officials when they come to you knocking your door saying you've got to register your children? It says who? Um, you know, there's plenty of opportunities. You are right. Yes, it's free will. We, we freely, parents freely have given away their children and um, to slavery, for sure. Santos, you know, I, I have... Children, I, myself, I've been through the system in regards to, I've been to county jail probably half, more than a half a dozen times, seven or eight times, and then I've been to prison. I've also uh, had my tax issues here where, you know, the, the tax man has came to my door with a gun, you know, where's our money, you know, and it is intimidating, and especially when you've been locked up and you've had your children taken away from you and you, you've experienced everything that you're saying even though I never challenged it, you know, I was the guy that, you know, ran from him and then, of course, was handcuffed and then had a, a bell that I couldn't make. And then, you know, behind the gun and, you know, a 98 percent conviction rate county, you know, you, you get charged with 12 crimes and you're facing 15 years. Of course, you're going to plead to two years in, in uh, prison to uh, avoid those 15 years in our jury system and so forth. What do you suggest I do with my children um, who haven't reached seven? What would you do? Yep, write to the Attorney General, write to the Pope, one or the other, whichever you feel, and uh, reclaim their DNA. I've got the paperwork for you. All okay. you have to do, yep, all you have to do is fill in the um, the personal information. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And let me ask you this, Santos. I mean, you're you're a living testament to what you're you're teaching, and you've been teaching for several years. I mean, you're you're traveling. Uh, you, you don't seem to be on a, a white list where you can't fly that I know of. You haven't announced that yet, but you could forgive me if I or correct me if I'm wrong. And then you're you're still teaching this. You're you're saying these things. You're obviously uh, finding your own way, meaning you're you're supporting yourself uh, via your own creations. And I know you don't deal with the bank and anything like that, but you're, you're able to function in the system and you're not thrown in Guant Guantanamo Bay yet. You, you're not in jail. So obviously you're a living testament to this is working. And that, and I, I feel that's why you feel intuitively that, that we are heading towards this and people like yourself will be leaders 
in this new system? Yeah, look, I've got a ways to go. Uh, I, I still have my passports, you see. I've got two. I've got a Euro and an Australian because um, because of necessity, you know. Uh, I consider that... I consider that as a necessary evil if I'm going to be travelling and whatnot. But the, see, the point is this: I do not have an evil intent behind using the passport. I need to travel, so it's by necessity under duress. Um, v dot C via coactis that I need these items of identification. You see, this is for the, the goons at the airport so they can say, oh, yes, ooh, you're, you are this person. Thank you very much. You can fly. You know, I need permission to, to fly. What a crock. Um, so so I've... I've um, you're not a that. threat to national security is, is what you're saying. So knowledge that it doesn't fall under homeland security or you being put on some kind of list where you can't fly because you're a danger to government because you're not going to go blow up you know when you come here to america you're not going to blow up some government building or anything you're you're distributing this knowledge and of course if this wasn't allowed they would have stopped you a long time ago correct oh yeah for sure yeah but um People like me, you know, they, they try to sort of... Uh, probably I've gone under the under their um, radar, perhaps. Uh, <laughs> no, but, uh, Santos, you, you must have probably five, ten million views of people that have watched you. I know that doesn't equate to dollars, but, I mean, you're having the views and the people and the fan base of some very big people, even though you're, you're not seeing in one day what Glenn Beck is. I'd say collectively you're, you're getting those numbers. Yeah, but what I'm saying is I've, okay. I've gone under the radar as in, as, as in they haven't come after me, although my information is probably the most deadly and dangerous and anarchistic to their system ever in history because it's true, perfect, pure syncretism. And syncretism is their enemy because they go on division, divide and conquer. So, But what I mean is they're too dumb to realize that syncretism is back and it's going to unify humanity forevermore. They, all these dumb idiots, all these shills that are listening to us now, right, there must be at least 10 idiot agents of these pedophile pimps that get probably $300 a week for, you know, um, you know shilling on, on our beautiful information. They're too freaking stupid to understand what I'm talking about. They think I'm a loony. They think, oh, Santos is just a loony. How, how are people going to ever understand what he's talking about? Well, the fact is you're correct. I've had tens of millions of hits, <laughs> and millions and millions of people are embracing syncretism and sovereignty and everything that I speak about. So this is an indictment on them. They're just too plain, freaking, stone, motherless, dumb to know, you know how dangerous my message is to them. But they'll find out when it bites them on the bum, and that's coming. Definitely. And what I'm learning, though, too, also, Santos, you'll, you'll have, of course, a lot of views and people that listen to the show. And I know you're big on, you know, not being the Mr. Guru guy out there. You're always like, here's the knowledge, but I'm not the guru or don't listen to gurus, which I, I concur and I, I believe in 100 percent. We are the guru. We are our own gods. But what? Um, oh, geez, I don't know where I was going with that. Scratch that. <laughs> OK, 134. <laughs> I'll write that down. All right, um, let's uh, – what do you want to talk about now? Look, I'm easy. Uh, <clears throat> basically, basically, I've tied up all the levels of syncretism that concern us right now. The um, how to get free from okay. the system and to be sovereign. Gotcha. That's where I was going, Santos. Okay, so I'll edit this part out and I'll, I'll re-lead it here. What I was trying to say basically is what can – people do out there to get off the fence that's one of the hardest things even for me to to, to do something and create and, and to get active and to do these things to to send that email to uh, Santos to get those DNA papers sometimes you know I'll say I'm gonna do it and then here a year down the road I don't you just got to do you got to live in the now right yeah yeah just just go as as your comprehension uh, allows you you can't just you know dive out of the system in one fell swoop uh you know go with your knowledge it takes it's taken me six or seven years and I'm still not completely out because 
Um, I want to do things um, in my way. I'm not going to just uh, copy other people's letters and things like that and do what they've done. Um, you know, and I've, I've done that before several times. So I've I've been doing this, you know, um, over a period of time. But eventually, we will ultimately get out of the system, and the best way for the system to fall is for people to make copies of shows like this and send them to their friends and their loved ones and anyone who may understand and, and, and grasp what's going on because the more people know the, the you know this system of slavery and how it works, the more people realise this and open their eyes, the quicker it will be that we reach critical mass and it's over for this system and it's over with pimpocracy. Because that's what it is. No use calling it, you know, whatever. We've been calling it democracy, mob rule, um, corporatocracy, oligarchy. None of those really suit it. It's pimpocracy. It's just a bunch of um, uh, pimps, thugs, who get other people to do all the work for them. And, and they get all the benefit from it. Did you, did you coin that pimpocracy? Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's uh, that's a good one. I, I'm sure someone will take it. Yeah, but but oh well, we, we we got enough time in the day. But I see a movie and uh, a whole book being written on that. Written on that. So that that's definitely how I feel. I sometimes feel like the whore on the street, you know. So, <laughs> but oh, it's it's disgraceful how far we've gone down now. We've really, really consumerism has really, really been the god of this system, you know, and consumerism and commerce, you see, consume, commerce, uh, this is the religion of the, of the world because people are too noisy, there's no stillness, they do not realise who it is that is within their breast, that it is God that is th that they are. They, they've written themselves off as useless, no good sinners, you know, uh, imperfect, oh, I'll never be as good as... Tom Cruise, oh, he's famous and rich, and yeah, you know, that's why they do these glossy magazines and all of this bullshit that Hollywood does to make us feel like we are insignificant. There's no hope. You can't change the world. There's nothing you can do. Just let it. It's a machine. Let it. It's a state. It's a state. The holy state, and it has a flag, and you have to be subservient to that flag, and and all this bullshit. This, yeah, and. All, and Let's add there to that, Santos, is that, you know, I listened to you for a few years before, you know, doing my own podcast and other people out there doing their own podcasts. I know you have your podcast that you had done for several years and it never I was never fulfilled until I really started doing my own thing and my own Gnostic pursuit, my own path and creating on my own and following my intuition. And and here I am after three years of listening to you, I, I, countless hours, videos. Um, your your DVDs, all that stuff, and here I am, three years later, after first listening to you, I'm finally talking to you. You know, it took me a year of emails because you're very busy, but this just shows you guys out there that are listening that you too can get off the fence and create. And when when he says share, and I correct me if I'm wrong, Santos, not just share on Facebook, but try to get your own blog, whether that's a dot WordPress blog or your own dot com. Try to create and do your own thing out there. The more footprints we have, the more change that we can have. So don't just stay on Facebook and on these shows. Create. Do you agree, Santos? Absolutely. The best tool we have is exposure because we can't go out there. Imagine how can you go against the state? You, uh, you know, it's got military machines to, you know, uh, high up to the the tallest mountains, and they've packed the world. It, the whole world's full of bombs and military machines and guns and tasers and killing devices. And they come to you with how many tasers they've got, one strapped around their neck, one up their ass, you know, a couple hanging off their testicles. They've got bullets. They've got all sorts of devices. Now they've, they've, they've invented some machine that they, they put on their, on their nose and it smells out cannabis. Oh, dare anyone <laughs> smoke that? That um, God plant, and, and you know, and open their minds, and you know, all, and and that they would have spent thousands. Scientists would have spent thousands of hours of resources to make this machine, to to give to cops to sniff out cannabis in in public. What a bunch of dipshits! I mean, what a bunch of idiots! 
and and they put on uniforms and commit crimes and think and think they're going to have a, a nice afterlife. Oh my God, you know I, I just cringe when I think these poor young men, poor young men, that all they're doing is is working for the pimps and and it's it's all people trafficking and slavery. And um, they, they haven't got the brains enough to realise that because they're unevolved, you know, they're, they're fornicators, really. What, their own system condemns them. You know, the Bible says, what do you not know? Fornicators will not inherit God's kingdom. In other words, you can never get to your head. You'll never raise, lift up the Son of Man, the manna, from the solar plexus to the um, optic thalamus along the spinal cord, that process won't happen and you'll never reach the higher mind and cross the Red Sea, the corpus callosum, to the right hemisphere, the you know, which is the hemisphere of intuition directly connected to cause. Because the left brain, where you know, the sin sinister brain, where all the sinners are, that's that's a linear sequential brain and that's the logical, rational and all that man bullshit stuff that that um, humans that do not acknowledge their godship do. Are they incapable of doing that? Or do, do they just have to incarnate X amount of times? Or are they just evil souls? I, I don't know. I think they're just fornicators in every sense. They just, they're just living as fornicators, you know, as, as, as the scripture says, you know, drunkards and, uh, and all of these things will not inherit God's kingdom. Basically, it's saying all the practices that you are doing is destroying your own temple and you're not going to get to your head. But it and seems like, yeah, Santos, and that seems like it's the majority, though. We we have a problem, or is there a way that the powers that be know this and they're going to reverse the curse and the magic and send those I people hope away? So. Okay, that's my hope. I, I, in, look, I might be a bit of a fool. I've always sort of been a happy-go-lucky <laughs> person, but um, it, there's a little space in my in my in me in my heart, put it that way, that that is thinking and wishing and hoping that it's all going to go good soon. And the, and the, the insane psychopathic elites will realize that, hey, um, we're, we're still no richer than we were 2,000 years ago, and, but there's more poverty, though, and there's more crime, and we, have, we, are surrounded, we ourselves are surrounded by bodyguards and, and security and fences and, and, and cameras. And, and, and what, what good is it to have this big military industrial complex and to own it if you're living in a prison surrounded by security cameras and security guards and you're scared that someone's going to come and, and kill you anyway. I mean, surely they're going to turn around and say, um, you know what, this bullshit, fictional papacy, crown, legal system, government, and all of these dickhead institutions that we've supported for, for so long um, are just a fiction and are a hindrance to our beautiful, um, loving paradise that we really, really are deep down. Deep down, there is a paradise in our hearts. There is joy and bliss and eternity and immortality and godship and all-knowing and all-power. And we can do anything. We can do anything we want. Do what thou wilt. That's the whole law. It's the whole law. We are gods, for ye are gods. And what can't a god... There's nothing a god can't do, you see. Um... Uh, and, that's, and, go ahead. Yeah, and that's it. The, the whole universe, the universe is mind, the electric universe, which is caused, it's an effect which is caused by magnetic light, and we belong in both of those worlds. We are effect and we are cause. So we are creators. We created this world. We are participators, co-creators -create, with the cosmocrators, the archons, in producing this, you know, real, you know, illusion. Um, as Einstein said, it's 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 only reality is an illusion, albeit, albeit a persistent one. It's persistent, all right, because we give it so much credence. You know, we really do. You see how much power a policeman has when he stops one of those goons on the road. Hey, you! And they turn around all scared and everything, and they're quickly to pull out their wallets and show their licenses, you know, uh, their um, 
permission to do licentious things and, and you know the moment you do that and you show the cops that you've got someone else's intellectual property you're already belligerent and they're already going to put your ass in jail so um why carry id uh, and so you see how much power that has been given to the fiction it's ridiculous it's got to end it has to end we've we've exposed it the, the emperor has no clothes you know I agree, Santos, and that's a beautiful way to end it. You're, you're so eloquent with your words, and I know that um, your knowledge is never ending. I would love to talk to you in, in the next year, six months or whatever, if I can. I know, again, you're, you're busy and you do a lot of shows, but it's great that you're doing these podcasts again and not just doing uh, your own podcast because I know it takes a lot of time, not only with the research, but also your time, and uh, you give a lot of yourself, Santos, and... I myself appreciate it, and I know there's thousands, if not millions of people who have listened to you that appreciate you. And uh, again, from the bottom of my heart, I'm honored to have you on my show. I thank you for your time, Santos. Yeah, thanks, brother. And I can come back on earlier than six months. Don't worry about that. No, no worries. Awesome. Great. So, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll be in touch, Santos. And again, thank you for your time. If you would love to uh, check out his work, and I'm sure many of you know uh, Santos, he's at universaltruthschool.com. Again, that's universaltruthschool.com. Do you take any donations? What's the best way to support you, Santos? Um, the best way to support me would probably be to get something in return, which would probably to be, I've got um, music, flamenco, Latin jazz music that I sell on my music site, or you can get it on iTunes, you can get it anywhere, but, but I, I sell my CDs, if you're interested in getting something back, you know, you can listen to, it's guitar, it's all instrumental, no singing. Um, and that's at um, santos.net.au it's very easy to find on my music site just put Santos Panacci official music site I guess um, or you can um, or you can buy some of my presentations uh, on the holy science on syncretism I have 14 available and I think it works out to be about um, $24 with postage for each presentation but there's a there's a, you can get the 14 package. Um, that's the only way. I don't have any don donation buttons. Okay. There's only my presentations and my music, and that's it. Yeah, definitely, and I, I highly recommend that you either get his, his music or these presentations, and you could sit down in the comfort of your home, and everything that he's touched on, you could see in detail in, in your own home and he spends a lot of time on his research and putting these together and you could tell by the the way you talk you know what you're talking about again thank you santos please support him with whatever you can by uh either buying his music you could see his uh, videos actually on youtube where you could see um him playing some acoustic and guitar so he's got some great stuff out there thanks again santos thanks brother all okay. the best take care right. you too brother bye